for a minute. Uh, welcome. We're glad you're all here, but there are a lot of people still out there. Can, can we scoot in some? And there's a bunch of seats up here in front. <laughs> we don't like <laughs> If the scouts in the back can start working your way in, we're going to start service. So. <laughs> and uh, there's, uh, there's some over here. We kind of have them all over, but come on in. I should have saved some for you guys. I'm sorry. There's some over on this side, too. And you can sit on laps. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. And um, we're just going to take a moment of silence to just take everything in. And Bill has a prelude. He's dying to play. Let me just unplug the organ quick. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but if... We can prepare ourselves for worship as Bill plays our opening uh, organ prelude.
Bill's been wanting to do that for a long time. <laughs> It'll be... Oh. <laughs> Uh, So welcome. Um, I got to tell you, we're going to do a few quick announcements that I just have to get out of the way. Uh, And then uh, we're going to have a lot of announcements today. A lot of things are happening. And so I want to start first, though. Um, Two two weeks ago, I started a series, right? And we focused on the good about two weeks ago. And then I was supposed to come and we're supposed to do focus on Christ today. But... As we started getting excited about all this, I decided I have to rewrite my sermon, (laughs) right? And so today, just so you know, um, today is a big day, and the sermon is, I will give thanks, and I think it fits, and so we want to talk about that. But before we do, let's just talk about the two main things. There's a bunch of announcements in your bulletin you can see, but the first one is, Following this service, all of you are welcome to follow us into the fellowship hall where we will be having a potluck so you get to know our congregation and our members, um, and we're excited about that. Uh, But then afterwards, after the potluck, we all have to sign in. Those who are members of the church have to sign in because then we will start our annual meeting uh, where we uh, vote on our budget and council members and all of that. And so I just want to get that out of the way first. And then the second thing is tomorrow we start our Knowing Christ Bible study. It's 10 a.m. in the morning in the fellowship hall and 6 p.m. at night in the fellowship hall. It's an incredible program. Over 250 people have taken it. And so we're just inviting you as members to come partake in that. It's an amazing, amazing, amazing Bible study. Um, It's so important that all of council members, all of staff... Um, And all key leaders, we had voted as a continuing resolution in the council that they must take that class if you want to be in leadership and all of that because it puts us all on the same level. It builds a foundation that we all grow from. So please remember that. And those are the announcements. Now, we have a lot of things that are happening today, and so we might go long. But that's okay, right? Because we're in this great thing. And uh, this has been hard work. So uh, right now I want to ask the council and staff and anybody else who volunteered on helping us develop this, please rise. I'm putting you on the spot, I know. (laughs) But please rise. Um, All of these people, and there's a few that are not here, have worked tirelessly for the last two years to get this to where it is. And uh, I'm going to choke up. (laughs) It's pretty amazing. Ed, you started this. (laughs) So please thank all of them. Uh, Ed was the one who got me choked up because Ed came in today and just started to cry. Right? And it's amazing. So um, all of you guys have worked hard. And now I want to talk about how important this is to give thanks. From everything from the soon-to-be-revealed baptismal uh, to all the sanctuary which you see, okay? Three and a half, four years ago, we knew that we had to start taking care of our property better. And so what we did is uh, we voted to take a mortgage out, right, to pay off the original mortgage and, and put some roofs on and paint the building and fix the bathrooms and do an infant care and maybe get a van and fix some windows. And then... After we voted to do that, this thing called a lightning strike happened. And in August 5th of 2021, we had computers all the way into the preschool blow up, start on fire when this lightning strike hit, and it burned everything out. And it was devastating, right? Then you were in the middle of COVID, and all these things were going on, and it was just chaos. And here we are. Then we had a hole in our roof. Then we were never going to touch the sanctuary, but because of the hole in the roof and the leaks and everything that happened, we ended up having to do all of this, okay? So I want to show you what God does. We voted to do around 800000 to pay off the first mortgage to get the painting done and some things done. Once we did that, two individuals of membership came to me separately and said, you know, Pastor... We really want that bus, and we really want that digital sign. And so um, I want to give you the money to paint the building, and I want to give you the money to put in four new air conditioners. 
And I said, oh, so you don't want us to get a mortgage? And they said, no, pastor. If you can get a, a, a need taken care of, then you can get some of those wants, the bus and the sign. And so that was about 80 grand that was given, right? They also did the mural. And then an individual then gave another 36,000 to put the hurricane windows in our building, right? And so that total came to about $140,000 that two individuals gave to your church because they believed in what God was doing. Then we took 800000 and found out that, oh my gosh, now we have to redo the sanctuary. So we had to take another 400000 so that's one2 And then the insurance gave $1,059,000, well, close to 60000 So when you add that $1,060,000 with the one forty and the one2 we took out, that's almost $2.4 million we put into our ministry in this church in the last two years. Okay? Now, that gets better than that. You see our Touching Tomorrow Today campaign? That's not even been quite a year. It's almost a year since we started it. And so far, 608,000 commitments have come in or have been pledged. Over, I think, close to 300,000 has come in within the first year, and it was a three-year process. Okay? And then there's some thoughts of a special gift and things like that, and there's these things going on, and all of a sudden, at the end of all of this, we may have between two hundred dollars and $300,000 mortgage. Do you see what God has done? He took $2 million, or one, our 1 $1.2, and he doubled it, and we're going to have 200000 maybe 300000 at the end of all of this. I... It's unbelievable. And God led this and God did this and it's amazing. Um, it's amazing all the ways God showed up throughout this. About a month ago, we had to choose different color carpeting. And it was one of the most difficult things the council has done. <laughs> we were all tired and fatigued and it was very hard and feelings were hurt. And we selected a bright blue, right? And all of a sudden, I was, I was like, oh, what are we doing? But God was in control, right? Because then we ordered that bright, bright blue carpet. And a week later, we get a call from our carpet installer. And he said, they don't even make it anymore. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I'm like, I better check myself in the hospital, right? If I have to call counsel and ask for another vote, we're in trouble. <laughs> So I just said, what blue is closest to it? And this is the blue. And it fits. It fits. So when we get out of God's way, even in carpet, he leads us the right way. And uh, it's been hard. It's been tough, Nick. <laughs> so um, I just, I, I just want to thank you guys. Now, there's so much we're going to do. But first, before this, uh, they just got here. So I'm going to ask Nick and his beautiful bride to come up. He's been practicing to sing a song this whole... I'm just kidding. But Nick, could you just come up for a second? And um, guys, this is Nick. Nick Nolby. He's become a great friend. <laughs> Nolby, right? I said it right. Nolby, Nolby. This is our contractor who has done all of this. And it's been amazing. <laughs> and... Um, He's become a great friend. Uh, he's done an amazing job. And I just wanted you guys to meet him and uh, to say hello. And I want you guys this next year, this next two years, this next five years to remember him and his family in prayer. He was, again, a divine action of God. We looked for three or four contractors. Uh, we had some come in before we even met Nick. They gave us some bids. And when we called them, they never came back. And then our engineer, uh, our guy who was doing our drawings, we called him and I said, do you know anybody? And he says, if this guy will do the work, he is the best you'll ever find. And that's how we called Nick and then he came in and he has done all of this. And so we want to make sure you guys know you're a part of our family forever and we love this and we're so grateful, Nick. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. <laughs> okay. 
So let's talk about more things to be thankful for. Um, and we're going to get, we have our scouts here. This is scout weekend as well. So we're going to introduce the scouts. We're going to say a prayer over the scouts here in a few minutes. And, um, and then I have some other people to introduce you to. But when you came in the door, and if you haven't yet, let's, uh, did anybody get new bumper stickers? Okay, not everybody will get this one and not everybody will get this one. But before you leave here, this is a gift from our youth. Our youth got these bumper stickers done. You guys have done so much to bless them with camps and with all this stuff that we wanted to give you this. And you put these on the back of your window so people know where you go and where you celebrate and where you honor God. And so please, before you leave, if you did not get one, make sure you get with the youth to get one of these Bumper stickers are really important. They're saying thank you to all of you. Okay. Another thing, that, uh, I don't have the person who built this, but we have a, can you put the slides up? You're going to find out that I'm an amazing artist. <laughs> and if you see that there, that was my idea. See, I got this nice gift when I got ordained from a good friend, uh, and it's the Celtic cross. And it's important to me because it's from Scott and Ireland, from Norwegian. It's really a great thing, right? And so I wear it. And uh, all of a sudden, we have this theme happening with that cross. And so I came up with an idea. We needed a new baptismal. Baptismals are five, six, seven, eight, nine thousand dollars $9,000. And I thought, well, we can make one cheaper if I had the talent, right? Well, we found a firefighter in Broward County, a fire chief who does woodworking, and I want to show you now, he did this from, and that's our new baptismal. It's made out of white oak, hand-carved everything. We have a bowl that is, um, I forget what it's called, what is, as alabaster from Egypt, um, with an alabaster pitcher, and that is our new baptismal, and it carries a theme, and later on, when the choir starts, you're going to see how that theme continues to carry on. And, uh, but we want you guys to see that. That is unique, one of a kind. No, no other church has it, and it will be here forever. It's made out of white oak. It's heavy. And I'm going to ask, Don, could you come up and Mike, maybe? Or d d and we're just going to move it on over by the organ there. Please be careful. Please be careful. It is very heavy, and um, it is solid oak, white oak. But when you get a chance, come and look, okay? The other thing is we have lots of construction still happening. Um, so over the next few weeks, you're going to see more things finished up. The bathrooms, they're not done. Please don't use them yet, okay? <laughs> but go in and check them out. Go check out the infant care, okay? Um, but I wanted to show that. Okay, another thing. That infant care, we planned out and we thought we want to do this. The first week I got here in July of 2019, Nicole, I met with Nicole, our preschool director, and I said, Nicole, if there is anything I could do as the pastor here that will help your ministry in the preschool, what would it be? And she said, Pastor, we have to get infant and toddler care. Here we are now, almost five years later, but look at it. And then we budgeted this year. We thought, okay, we're going to get maybe eight infants and 12 toddlers, and that's what we budgeted for. And there, there'll be a small profit from that at the end to do ministry with. Well, we got licensed for 26 infants and 18 toddlers. And that was above and beyond anything we could imagine. And again, it's showing God blessing us and stretching the dollar and helping us be able to do ministry in our community and in our church and everywhere in a bigger and broader way. Then it goes on even more. We got notified that a preschool close by will be closing their doors in May. And now we have a waiting list of people that could come with the potential of growth and all kinds of amazing things there. Do you see how God does this? They, this wasn't ready to be done. If this would have been done two years ago, that wouldn't have happened. And all of a sudden, God's timing is perfect and is opening doors for ultimate blessing that we can't even imagine yet. And this is what God does when we step out of the way. And so I want you guys to see how amazing that is. And all of you did this. Your prayers, 
your love, your blessing, your encouragement, your support for all the members and staff and people have been great. And that is what is doing this. And that's why our church is growing. So, amazing thing. So, I, I just, if we could clap for God, <laughs> because <laughs> it blows my mind what is going on. Okay, so now I'm going to ask the scouts to come up, and if they'll just line up here. Now, we have more than this, but this is who came to represent for Scout Sunday. And, um, okay, guys, you, you know what song you picked? You're, you're ready to sing? I don't have to direct you, right? You got this? I'm just kidding. We, uh, since 1963, we, we started our church in 61. Since 1963, Troop 499 and PAC 499 has been part of our church. Over, uh, does anybody know, 80, 90 82. Eagle Scouts? 82. 82 Eagle Scouts are part of that program. They are blessing these kids. Their leadership is outstanding. And uh, throughout the years, it's been amazing. And then this year, we added a new thing. So we have Troop 499 Boy Scouts, PAC 499 Cub Scouts, and now we have Crew 2499. Is that right? Correct. Is it, am I right? Or? Okay. And that crew is for, I'll let love say love, what, 16 to? 16 and up. And up. Uh, boys that want to do high adventure. High adventure stuff. And it's another part, and uh, it's exciting. And so we, we want you to know that we continue to grow, and we have ideas and thoughts, and the program is strong, and it's going to get better, and there's a lot of programs, a lot of Eagle Scout. If you guys look, we have new signs that point arrows all over the campus to where to go. That was an Eagle Scout project. There's a stage over by the Memorial Garden now where we can do outdoor movies, um, and outdoor things, and that's uh, tremendous. We have another program that's getting ready to come off in the Memorial Garden where they're going to put a pavilion and a fountain. Um, and these Eagle Scouts continue, and these Scouts continue to bless. And many times, you don't see them or hear them because they come at night. But every Tuesday night, they walk this whole Prima Vista picking up garbage, and they walk our property and they pick up garbage, right? And that, I mean, that's just one simple example. Um, they do a cleanup every year. They do all these amazing things. And so if you guys could rise as you are able, we just want to say a prayer for them. And so I'm going to ask you to stretch your hands out over these leaders and over these uh, scouts as we thank God for their blessing to us. Heavenly Father, gracious God, Lord, uh, you do amazing things every day in everybody's life. And through our church, we have these honorable Boy Scouts full of integrity and honesty and respect. And uh, we love them. We thank you for them, Lord. We pray a special anointing over their leaders, asking your spirit to touch them and continue. Uh, it's a heart they have to teach these boys well. And so we're so grateful for them. We thank you in your heavenly name. Amen. You sure you guys don't want to sing? Okay, you can be seated. You all can be seated. Okay, we still have more. So now I have to ask Stephanie Stark to come forward, Maya Penhassen to come forward, and Steve Miller to come forward. I think Maya's going to play spoons. Steve's going to... Oh, I'm just kidding. Many of you know these three individuals. Uh, Steve was our youth director a number of years ago. Maya is our new youth director, and Steph is our communications director. All three of these individuals are in seminary. <laughs> so Steph is in her second year. Steve's starting his third year ish. And Maya started her first year. Maya is going to Palm Beach Atlantic University. Um, for her Master's of Divinity. Steve is at Southern Seminary, and, um, and Stephanie is in Emmanuel Academies, um, which is an incredible program that I'm hoping us as Lutherans adopt because it's fantastic. Now, why am I introducing you to them? You all know them, but it's important that we start supporting them and lifting them up as future leaders of the church. 
All of them have the potential to be great pastors. God has a touch on their life. And so I want to introduce you guys to them and let you know that they'll be doing some sermons and getting more involved around here at church. Maya has a sermon to do soon. Steph has a sermon to do soon. And so you guys are going to start seeing them uh, at services. But these three, it is very important that we're lifting them up daily in prayer. I will tell you, you can ask Lisa, some of the most difficult times I've had was in seminary. The devil doesn't want people to serve him, right? to, to serve God. And they're going to put obstacles in their way. They're going to put health issues and all kinds of things in his way. And so we need to lift them up, encourage them, honor them, respect them, and, and help them grow into the leaders God's calling them to. So we're going to say another prayer. You don't have to get up for this, but let's pray for them as well. Heavenly Father, gracious God, Lord, um, you say many are called, but few uh, are chosen. Few come. And these three have made the decision to learn more about you, to understand you, and to help share that gospel message to our world. And so we pray for them now. We lift them up. We thank you for them. We ask special abundant blessing upon them. In your heavenly name we pray. Amen. Amen. I think, am I almost done? I think I'm getting there. Oh, the final thing is we have new members. Any of the new members, could you please come forward? Mike, were you going to say something? No. Oh. I'm just already walking up. Okay. <laughs> and I don't have a microphone. I should have had them bring a mic up because what I'll do is have everybody. Oh, we got it already. Good job, Mike. <laughs> and I will pass, um, I will start way over here, and we're just asking you to introduce yourself, and then pass it along the way. If you want to sing, you can. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm Sigrid Nielsen. I live here in Port Jacuzzi. Jimmy Gamble. Mark Walschlegel. And I'm Pam Walschlegel, and we're moving here from Palm Beach Gardens. Awesome. Well, thank you. Um, my name is Mike. I'm the new uh, praise and worship music director here. Um, I'm super excited to be stepping forward in my faith with everybody here, getting to know everybody as well, and maybe building stuff with the Scouts. Debbie Butcher. Bert Butcher, but you can call me Butch. <laughs> awesome. And if you just put it up there. Okay, so now we have to welcome you into our church family. Dear friends in Christ, the members of our congregation are happy that you are to become part of our Christian fellowship. Our Lord Jesus Christ bids us to confess him before men, promising that he will, if, promising that he will confess us before his Father in heaven. That we may rejoice in your confession, I now ask you, in the presence of God and this congregation, do you accept and confess the teachings of the Evangelical Lutheran Church? as you have learned to know them from the small catechism, are faithful and true to the word of God? If so, answer, I do. As members of this church, do you intend to continue in the confessions of this church, attend worship, make diligent use of the means of grace, and lead a righteous and godly life? If so, answer, I do so with the help of God. Will you support the work our gracious Lord has given this congregation with your prayer, time, treasures, and talents. If so, answer, I will with the help of God. Upon your promise, I, in the name of St. Andrew Lutheran Church, extend to you the right hand of fellowship and love, acknowledging you as a member of St. Andrew Lutheran Church, in inviting you to receive the Lord's Supper and to participate in all the other blessings of salvation which God has given to this church in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome all of you. <laughs> Thank <you>. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. This is uh, another amazing thing to be thank thankful for. Um, we're, we are just 
continuing to grow when most of the Lutheran churches are continuing to go down. And so this is just another blessing of God's work uh, through us uh, and through our church. And so we thank all of you for being here. God bless. So that was only a half an hour. Now we just have one more hour, and uh, we'll try to get through this. Um, oh, wait, no, I have one more. The most important I forgot about. Uh, this one I definitely will choke up on. Becky and Josh, or uh, Bree Bri, B and Josh. How many know these two? They started in preschool really, really little. They've been a member of our congregation and been a blessing. And uh, give me a second. <laughs> so I did 26 years in the Army. One of the best times in my life was four years I spent as a recruiter. And it was great because you got to see these young men and women making their first adult decision and doing something that is above and beyond what... 99% of the rest of our country never does. B and Josh have joined the military, and um, we're going to watch their swear in video. They asked me uh, to not only partake and help guide them, but they also invited me down to MEPS in Miami, where I got to be in their swear in ceremony, and we're going to let you watch that. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your full name. I, I Justin, I'm I'm Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear. That I'll support and defend. I'll support and defend. The Constitution, the, Constitution of the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And of the state of Florida. And of the state of Florida. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I'll bear true faith. That I'll bear true faith. And allegiance to them. And allegiance to them. And that I'll obey the orders. And I'll obey the orders. Of the President of the United States. Of the President of the United States. And the Governor of Florida. And the Governor of Florida. And the orders. And the orders. Of the officers appointed over me. Of the officers appointed over me. According to law and regulations. According to law and regulations. So help me God. So help me God. Okay, congratulations, you two. Good to go. Yay. <laughs> So it is official. You have private first class Josh Locker and private uh, B Lockler. And I, I want to tell you, um, amazing. Uh, Josh is going to be an IT specialist for the Florida Army National Guard. And B is going to be an air traffic control woman. <laughs> Thank you both. So that definitely needs prayer and encouragement and support. And uh, we love our vets here. And um, they're amazing. Okay. Is that good? Are we ready to start our service? <laughs> this service is a blended service, right? So we take a little bit of our traditional and a little bit of our praise and worship. And we blend it together. So please rise. Oh, wait. Yeah, please rise. <laughs> And we're going to do our first hymn, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus.
bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God has given his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of Christ's church, and by Christ's authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing as you're able while we sing our next songs. This is my 
Before we go into this next song, I just want to say a quick prayer just because we're back in here. It's great. It's my first time being in here for a service because I'm still rather new to everything. But if you join me, bow your heads. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to come together and worship you as not just two separate services, but as one solid congregation. Thank you for the Boy Scouts being here. Thank you so much for um, all of our men and women in the military, including our two young recruits that are going in. Um, Thank you for all you've given me and my family, all you've given everybody here and everyone's family. Um, I pray that you watch over our health. Thank you so much for letting us come here to worship you on Sunday and for this church to continue to do every activity that it's been doing and to keep growing. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 A rock beyond the solid ground Nations rise and fall One strong throne has shaken We trust forever in your name The name of Jesus We trust the name of Jesus
name of Jesus, from age to age you reign. Your kingdom has no end. You are the only king forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only king forever. Forevermore, you are victorious. You are the only king forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only king forever. Forevermore, you are victorious. Thank you. You may be seated. And we are going to ask Zach to come up and sing and dance. I'm just kidding. Zach is going to read our scripture this morning. You good? Yeah. And now millions of people are watching you, so don't be nervous. <laughs> You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and living and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee your, from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. There. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely, the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me. Even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. you for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel reading is from John chapter 11. Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with the stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there four days. Jesus then said, Did I not tell you that if you believe you will see the glory of God. So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and his feet were wrapped with stripes of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, Take off the clothes and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated again. Good morning. <laughs> I'm uh, glad you all are here. I'm glad we're back in the sanctuary. And uh, so let's pray. Heavenly Father, uh, gracious God, Lord, we thank you for everything you do. We thank you for the blessings of the healings that have happened here, the loved ones that have been blessed, and we just thank you, God, that you're with us. We ask now that your Holy Spirit come upon each of us here to help us discern this message so it transforms our hearts, changes our minds, and leads us closer in relationship to you. In your heavenly name we pray, amen. So part of our reading that Zach read this morning, Psalms 139, is verse 14. And the King James says this, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Or the Amplified Bible says this, I will give thanks and praise to you, 
for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, and my soul knows it very well. We are wonderfully made, and we are thankful for it. Do you know your heart beats around 100,000 times each day? Your body has about six quarts of blood. These six quarts of blood circulate through your body three times every minute. In one day, the blood travels a total of 12,000 miles. That's four times the distance from coast to coast of our country. When was the last time you thanked God for one of those heartbeats? You take approximately 23,000 breaths every day. The process of inhaling oxygen and exhaling carbon dioxide is a complicated respiratory task that requires physiological precision. We tend to thank God for the things that take our breath away, right? Look at your brides, right? <laughs> and that's fine. But when did you last time thank God for one of those breaths? Your kidneys are uh, bean-shaped organs, each about the size of your fist. They are located near the middle of your back, just below your rib cage. They are sophisticated trash collectors. <laughs> Every day, your kidney processes about 200 quarts of blood. And they sift out about two quarts of waste product and extra water. That waste and extra water becomes urine, which flows to your bladder through tubes. And your bladder stores that urine until you go to the bathroom. When did you last go to the bathroom and thank God that your plumbing worked? <laughs> your eyelids blink about 10,000 times daily, assuming that you get about eight hours of sleep, that is. We have to blink to cleanse and moisten the eyes. Each time the eyelid closes, salty secretions from your tear glands are swept over the eye surface flushing away small dust particles and lubricating the exposed portion of the eyeball. Our eyes are always forming tears. The blink wipes them away and protects and cleans the eye. When did you last thank God for one of those cleanings? You have roughly 1.6 trillion skin cells. The human sheds about 600 thousand particles of skin every hour. About 1.5 pounds a year. By 70, by the 70 years of age, an average person will have lost 105 pounds of skin cells. But that's not the best way to do diets, people. Okay? <laughs> Humans shed and regrow outer skin cells about every 27 days. Did you know that? Every 27 days, you're a new thing, a new person, a new being. In your lifetime, you will change your skin completely over a thousand times. When was the last time you thanked God for the protection your skin gives and continues to give day in and day out? The average mouth produces about two liters of spit every day. Our salivary glands located in the inside of each cheek at the bottom of our mouth are under the jaw at the front of the mouth. They churn up about two to four pints, one to two liters of spit every day. Saliva contains many important substances including electrolytes, mucus, antibacterial compounds, and various enzymes. Saliva keeps your mouth moist and comfortable and helps you chew, taste, and swallow. It fights germs in your mouth and prevents bad breath. Well, for some of us. <laughs> it also has proteins and minerals that protect tooth enamel, enamel and prevents tooth decay and gum disease. When did you last thank God when you smelled or saw something good to eat and your mouth began to water? 
Giving thanks should be as natural as all, as, uh, all the ways our body were designed to work by God. But unlike all things, thanksgiving is not involuntary. All those things I told you, you can't change. They're involuntary. Thanksgiving is an intentional act of worship. The more we know about God and His Word, including how He created us, the more we can praise Him and be thankful that we were made wonderfully. The more we know Him, may the Lord bring a thankful spirit to our minds and hearts with every breath we take. When I read the Amplified reading of Psalms, it says, I will give thanks and praise to you. Each and every one of us should be ready to offer up praise to the Lord. The psalmist offers up thanksgiving and praise to the Lord because it was part of his everyday routine. And thousands of years later, we still read that routine. He did not even have to look for reasons to be thankful. They were everywhere. So he was more than willing to be thankful. I wonder if God were to keep a log of our thanks. How many entrance, entries would we have registered in it? Right? There will be books and books and pages and pages of everything we do wrong. But how big will our pile of good be? Being thankful daily is important. Two-time Academy Award-winning uh, actor Denzel Washington is best known for his roles in Glory, The Preacher's Wife, Remember the Titans, Training Day. But this Hollywood A-lister has sounded more like a pastor when he has spoken in recent events. Like me, Denzel, uh, like many people who grew up in a home with pastors, Denzel was a PK. That's a pastor's kid. His father was a Pentecostal preacher from Mount Vernon, New York. But more important than that is that Denzel Washington is a growing Christian. He has been an active member of West Angeles Church of God in Christ for over 30 years. Denzel says he reads his Bible every morning and strives to consistently get up and speak of what God has done for him. At a November 2015 church banquet, he did exactly that. But then he urged his listeners to live in a constant attitude of gratitude for God's goodness. He said, give thanks for the blessings every day. Every day embrace gratitude, encourage others it is impossible to, impossible to be grateful and hateful at the same time. I pray that you put your slippers under your bed at night so that when you wake up in the morning, you have to start on your knees to find them. And while you're down there, say thank you. Denzel Washington. A bad attitude is like a flat tire. Until you change it, you're not going anywhere. Sharon Archer, a psychologist who teaches at Harvard University, suggested that we can train our brains to become more grateful by setting aside just five minutes a day for practicing gratitude. This person cites a one-week study in which people were asked to take five minutes a day at the same time every day to write down three things they were thankful for. They didn't have to be big things, but they had to be concrete and specific. Such as, I am thankful for the delicious dinner, Thai dinner I had last night. Or I am thankful that my daughter gave me a hug. Or I am thankful that my boss complimented my work. The participants simply expressed thanks for three specific things at the same time every single day. At the end of one month, the researcher followed up and found that those who practiced gratitude, including those who stopped the exercise after one week, were happier and less depressed the rest of their life. 
Remarkably, those who continued for three months, those participants who had been part of that one-week experiment were still more joyful and content. Incredibly, after six-month mark, they were still happier, less anxious, and less depressed. The researcher hypothesized that the simple practice of writing down three thanksgivings a day over the course of a week primed the participants' mind to search for good in their lives. That's pretty good. Kathy Lynn, is she here? Kathy always says, Pastor, what three things made you smile today? Right? Those are good things to remind us of. The Bible tells us that we are to always be thankful, day in and day out, in the good and in the bad times. The Bible also tells us that Daniel prayed three times a day. He prayed when it was convenient to pray, and he prayed when it was inconvenient to pray. We know that story, right? He would not not pray, and they threw him in the den of lions. I don't think there should ever be a day when we as Christians, living in the greatest country ever, are not found to be thankful daily. I know one thing for sure. If I tried to thank the Lord for all of my blessings, I would never catch up. And I am way behind in giving thanks. Ungratefulness is a decision. Some years ago, my son Canaan had a friend who had been raised by his grandparents. He was a great kid, but had a lot of struggles. His mom and dad weren't in the picture. I, I never knew if they were in jail or if they, if they had passed or what. I just knew that from a little kid, he was raised by his grandparents. But he struggled. He struggled and struggled and struggled. It was difficult for anyone to raise a teenager, but this kid made his grandparents beyond stressed. For several years, he rewarded them with unfathomable rebellion, anger, and sin until he made his grandparents completely miserable. I talked to him one day in our living room. And I said, you know, they, they did not have to take you in. You could have gone into foster care or into the court systems. How many 70-year-olds want to take in some teenagers right now? Any? Right? You live that. You've done that. But if it was one of your loved ones, you would step up. That's what they did. They got up in the middle of the night with them and changed his diapers. They did great sacrifices to give him a good education, to take care of him, to buy him motorcycles, dirt bikes, four-wheelers, to take him to the woods camp, and they did all this stuff. They sacrificed so much. Now, nobody would have blamed them if they had said, we just can't handle it at our age, and let them go. But I was talking to him about, you know, they didn't have to do it. And I remember his reply. He bitterly replied, do you think this is the first time I've ever thought of all that? I know what they've done. What am I supposed to do? Spend the rest of my life saying thanks? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. A thousand times yes. You're supposed to spend the rest of your life saying thank you. Everyone is. That is what real life is. An expression of gratitude to God. Yes, we should spend the rest of our lives every waking moment saying, Thank you. Are you truly thankful? I wonder if we are thankful enough to those that are ever present in our lives. Do we express enough thanks to those whom we dearly love? What about the spouse who has been there with you through thick and thin? They stood beside you before you had anything. Have you ever thanked them properly? I owe Lisa big thanks. And I miss this times. And it's not fair to her. Right? We must be grateful in all we do. 
Are you thankful? Many of us have unexpressed gratitude for those that mean the most to us. So why wait? Every day is a good day to express our thanks to those that mean the world to us. You cannot just assume that they know because gratitude is meaningless unless it's expressed. I want to challenge you today to begin expressing thanks and expressing gratitude to those whom you dearly love and appreciate. What was today about thanking our scouts, thanking our contractor, his bride, his father's here too somewhere. Oh, he's way back there. We should have had him come up and sing. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's saying no. It's not too late. It's not too late. <laughs> I want to challenge you today to begin expressing thank you and gratitude to those whom you dearly love and appreciate. I want to challenge you not to let time pass to the point that one day you regret never expressing your thanks to those whom you dearly love. I implore you to tell your mom, to tell your dad, to tell your son, to tell your daughter, to tell your grandchildren, and do it today while you still have time. The psalmist was expressing his thanks to the Lord, the Almighty One, His Creator, and His Intelligent Designer. I dare say that we could spend much more of our time in being thankful to the Lord. We should express our thanks to the Lord and tell Him how thankful we are. How often has God listened to your prayers? Have you thanked Him? How often has the Lord given you His peace? Have you thanked Him? Can you afford the Lord's grace? I can't. If not, have you thanked Him for that grace that's freely given? What could you give to the Lord for His benefit? Maybe you should just start with thank you. Has the Lord ever forsaken you? If not, you should thank Him for His presence. Give thanks when it takes faith. In the late 1800s, George Mueller operated an orphanage that once had 1,000 orphans. One morning there was no food to eat. But he called all the children and staff together and prayed, thanking God for providing food, even though no food was on the table. A few moments later, a baker knocked on the door. He told Mr. Moeller that God had led him to spend all night baking bread that he gave to the orphanage. A few minutes later, the door rang again. It was the milkman. He knocked on the door and said that uh, his wooden wheel broke and he was no longer able to transport the milk and it would spoil. So could your orphanage use this milk? He said that this milk truck was broken down and he wanted to give the milk to the orphanage. George Mueller gave thanks, even went in faith to do so. Jesus gave thanks Often. One such story is that from our reading this morning. Lazarus. Did you see the part? Jesus himself gave a thanksgiving proclamation. We have been the recipients of the choicest bounties of heaven. We have been preserved these many years in peace and prosperity. We have grown in numbers, wealth and power as no other nation has ever grown. But we have forgotten God at times. We have forgotten the gracious hand which preserves us in peace and multiplied and enriched and strengthened us. And we have vainly imagined in the deceitfulness of our hearts that all these blessings are produced by some superior wisdom and virtue of our own and not of God. Intoxicated with unbroken success, We have become too self-sufficient to feel the necessity of redeeming and preserving grace. Too proud to pray to God, the God that made us. It behooves us then to humble ourselves before God. To confess our original sin and to pray for clemency and forgiveness. 
I will give thanks. So what are some of those stories we're thanking for? Josh and B. What a blessing. Two people less than 1% of our population are going to serve in a time like this. We are thankful for you too. Our new members, eight or nine of them up here, we're growing. God is giving us and blessing us to be to share our story for his glory. How about this newly finished sanctuary? Ed just cried when he came in. It's beautiful. It's hard work. But it's something to be grateful for. What God has done with our good, bad, and ugly. Right? Our property, our buses, our windows, our bathrooms, our infant care, our toddler care. He took our 1.2 and made it 2.4. And his blessing goes on and on. I will be thankful and I hope each of you will too. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Please rise as you are able. With the whole church, let us confess our sins and the words, or confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we ask the ushers to come forward and receive this morning's offering. We will be having communion in just a few minutes, and it is open to all uh, who believe in Jesus Christ. You're welcome to come. We will be doing it through intinction. Um, if there's a pew pad, if you fill it out and pass it to your neighbor.
Heavenly Father, gracious God, Lord, receive our time, our talents, and our treasures to your house, to your work, to your ministry. Amen. Amen. Toxology. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, took bread, gave thanks, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it for all to eat, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, blessed it, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me.
gathered into one, let us pray as Jesus taught by thankfully joining hands across the aisle as we sing the Lord's Prayer. Taste and see that the Lord is good. You may be seated.
please rise as you are able. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and preserve you in his eternal grace. Amen. Amen. Um, Now, I will say this before the benediction. I promise next week will only be one hour. Okay, one hour. Nine o'clock, praise. Eleven o'clock, traditional. Okay. Now receive the benediction. May the God who loves you all fill you with his joy and his peace so that you can share a thankful heart to our world. Amen. Amen. Please join with us in our final closing hymn, How Great Thou Art.